So Russia off to the perfect start. Two love lead against the United States of America after the first two matches in this group encounter. This, of course, the third and final match for these two teams within the group. Tonight's matches will decide the final placings. Next on court, of course, is men's doubles. Vladimir Ivanov, Ivan Sozanov of Russia. American pair of Philip Chu, Satavat Nairat, Russians, so many of them are big, tall athletes. Philip Chu, what a busy man he's been. Back on court, as he played the stumbles, the first match. This is, in fact, his fourth match of the Sudderman Cup campaign. And he's a fourth different partner. Versatile man. <laughs> yeah. It, it gave me a sign of panic, too. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, his uh, men's doubles partner today, Satawat Pongnayarat, played men's singles in his first match, which was on Sunday against Sweden. Last year's men's singles encounter there. So Ivan, our this match will be Red. Ian Spear Red. from England. This Red is your choice. Converting the toss of the coin. That side, okay. Yep, will receive. Will the Russian pair, highly receive. experienced. Number 17 in the world ranking. There's Vladimir Ivanov. Who's going to serve? 25 year old from Chelyabinsk in the Ural Mountains in Russia left-handed partner, 23 years of age, but this is their sixth year playing together, formed their partnership, well started playing regularly on the world tour back in 2008, and they're a pair, but I think their win-loss record for the year doesn't look particularly impressive, the best result so far this year was a quarter-final here in Malaysia at the Malaysian Super Series event. They're a pair that graphed the European tour of tournaments. They've been in 21 career finals, winning 14 of them, which just shows what a consistent, hard-working pair they are. Both of them, incidentally, very fine men's singles players as well. Even off having won one title, been in three finals, his left-handed partner actually a better record than that. Three titles from three finals reached. So to their opponents and Philip Chu, 19 years of age, six days ago, celebrated his birthday. Well, his partner, Sutter Watts, turned 23, 14 days ago. So they've both been enjoying birthdays. And that they would love to enjoy a victory here. Their win loss record for the year. A couple of quarter finals in Peru and Tahiti. We've never had tournaments in exotic places <laughs> like, like Peru. <laughs> it's all changed mm -hmm. since our day, Morton. It has, it has. But I'm sure that's only for the better. Absolutely. Isn't it wonderful? The number of countries that are staying with you. International tournaments. Uh, we've already mentioned Ian Spear, Spear and Kelly Hall is our service judge from Australia. No, not surprisingly, this is the first time that these two pairs have met each other. But for the Russian combination, of course, they've played both matches so far on Sunday against Scotland and Tuesday against Sweden. And they remain undefeated at the moment. Played 2 1 2. Very well indeed. In fact, their match against Sweden. Russia will love two down in the overall tie. And it was the men's doubles win by this pair that started the recovery. And of course, they eventually won 3 2. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, USA, represented by Philip Chu and Satuat Panala. On my left, Russia, represented by Falomir Ivanov. 
and Ivan Susanov. Russia the Serb, Ivan Susanov, Kasakowat, Ponarat. Love all. Play. So the men's doubles gets underway. This encounter between Russia and the United States of America. Must win situation as far as the Americans are concerned. But in all honesty, it's a tall order, isn't it? Aren't it? it is. Uh, the Russian pairs you so rightly mentioned earlier is uh, a very established pair. And uh, they have played, as you say, many years on the circuit and have done really well. And I honestly can't see that they're getting pushed in this match. Two, one. And of course, last year they had a tremendous year, did the Russians. Five finals, oh. winning four of them. Sweden, Poland, Finland, Two. and their oh. home event, the Russian Grand Prix. And that was leading up to the Olympics, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. All of qualification, of course. And when they played in the Olympics, they That's finished over. third in their group of Three. four. Two. Lost a very, very close and thrilling match yeah. against the eventual silver medalist, Matthias Bowen Carsten Mogensen. In fact, the Russians took the opening game, 21-16, if you remember. It was an absolute cracking match. Game's only on the second, and the skin of their teeth, 21-19. So that just gives the quality Two. of this Russian combination. And if the uh, Three, four. American pair are to disturb the Russian pair, tactically, what have they got to try and do? They have to serve well. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 the key in, in any doubles match these days. They really have to serve well um, and stop doing that. I don't think they will f win the flat exchanges. Um, and I don't think they will win when they play defensive. They have to get on the attack, but they have to play better shots than that um, when they block to the net, try to get the lifts. But I, I think getting the service situation is actually where they can maybe shake it up a bit, but they have to be very good. But so far, I've only seen them serve into the tee. I'd like to see them have lots of variations on their services. And when I saw Chu play the mixed doubles, he was always serving into the tee. So there's... Uh, maybe not a lot of hope for for my idea yeah and of course uh, i mean we've talked so often about the serve return and third shot being so important but when you you're playing against two giants on the opposite side of the net even off these 197 that's about six foot five and a half sozanov is a mere 184 which is over six foot tall mm. feeling the pressure of a good low serve mm. is going to be a problem but um, we have to see what the, the players from the States can do. But that they're not winning, that's for sure. All these flat exchanges, the Russians are far better. Either they have to lift it, get it over them, or they have to block it to the net. Have to find the little gaps. Mm, that's landed in. feeding we're in for a very quick match here. The Russians, they, lo they look like the mean business. Yeah. Ten, three. To work hard to get it down.
Chu there. He was going for the forehand and then suddenly it turned out it came for the backhand and he couldn't really turn his body quickly enough. Yeah, I wonder about that cross-court smash, though. Yeah. Playing his partner really into trouble, wasn't he? He was. Hoping for the hoping for forehand. Yeah. All the instruction has been imparted to the players. Play. It's a shame for the States, they can't finish that one off. They really set it up quite well for themselves, but managed not to, to end it. But it all started with a very good little lift and caught the Russians off guard. Short. himself as a funny guy. Oh dear. <laughs> Finding nice. this too funny <laughs> at the moment though, will he? <laughs> Not really making any impact at the moment. It's a lot of power as well Six. that the. I think actually, I, I was thinking this is a really good shot he played. Mm. He moved well to it and, and he played it really steep despite the fact that it was kind of a flat lift. Yeah. Oh, that's power. Too much time. 18. Do anything he wants. what you do when you don't like your partner you just lift it short to him you know <laughs> on the other side and he smashes straight and say oh, why can't you take that one that <laughs> sounds like a man who's done that himself surely not more <laughs> or been done too <laughs> <laughs> yeah She's just putting Seven. the Americans under so much pressure from the onset of the rally. Which is two points away from his opening game. Oh. Just guiding it into the open space. Uh, Chu didn't manage to put enough pressure on it, so uh, obviously it was an open court.
good judgment. That's it dropped wide. Ooh, a bit Eight. concerned about Philip Chu's backhand defence. But we'll talk more about mm. that later. Game. Well, as clearly demonstrated on that shot there. Backhand error Eight. from Philip Chu. And as the umpire confirms, 21-8 in the opening game. Just 10 minutes played for game number one. Coach and how very nice to see a lady coach in charge of a mixed team. Yeah, she's been in charge for years. Claudia. Yeah, she's been around all the years I can remember. I have no idea. I only know her as, as, as Claudia, and that's it. Yeah. Great character. Yeah, she's been around for years, and yeah. I think she's been contributing really well to the, the Russian standard of play. Yeah. Mm, just before we get underway with the second game, I was mentioning the Philip Chu backhand, and my concern, Morton, is that when he plays the backhand, he tends to have the back of his hand facing his opponents. And I was always taught as a player, if you want a strong backhand, you cock your wrist so that the back of your hand is almost facing towards mm. your and face. Then you turn it. And Four then one. you turn it at yeah. the last Second. moment. Create an extra bit of Five power. We'll keep an eye on that throughout yeah. the second game. You should just be watching uh, Tony Gunnarman when he's doing it, because he's doing it really well. Oh, yes. <laughs> second game. But I don't know if Tony is still in the States or Lovel. not. I, I don't really know. Play. Yeah, I believe he is working as an accountant. Okay. Uh, his wife, Etty Tantry. Do you remember her as yes, a player? Yes, oh, a player, yeah. yes. I think they've got a family now as well. They have. But I was doing a, a coaching clinic with him some 10, 11 years ago. In, uh, in Los Angeles, and at that time they've just moved to the States. Yeah. That's not unlucky. Mm. Shot was deflected by hitting the top of the tape, but he was trying to play the perfect shot, wasn't oh, he? He was. Created his own luck. I like to see that. Three, one. Can we have that one in slow motion, please? <laughs> Look at that beautiful serve, serving wide. A lot of players could learn from that. easy to see that uh, Vladimir was uh, not scared he was really moving forwards even though it was attack on the other side and that's how he plays such a good shot Shorts. That's a Six, pity. Two. Seven, two. Yeah, Philip Jude beginning to look a little bit dispirited at the moment. to keep his head up, keep fighting. Nine, two. 
they're just in total control, really, aren't they? The Russian combination. Completely. Try the same shot again, the same return. First one fit to take first time, but this one in the net. Another one. They really feel the pressure. They don't know what to do, how to play. And uh, it seems like one-way traffic here. Yeah. In fact, Claudia, I don't think, is even going to get out of her coaching chair. So happy with her men. Even off, he's a very versatile player. Not only is he obviously a very good men's doubles player and men's singles we've been talking about as well. And, well, look, Vladimir Ivanov has shot up and the top three of the first two smashes so far throughout the Sudanon Cup. All top speeds there, all for men's doubles players, none from the men's singles. 11-2. So play resumes. Yeah, I remember uh, Vladimir Ivanov at the European Mixed Team Championships in Ramoskoya earlier this year. He played all three disciplines. That's mm. unusual. Yep. That's very unusual. Yep. He was used in men's singles, he was used in mixed doubles, he was used in. I remember in his semi final actually him looking strangely uh, jaded. Well, no, <laughs> downcast. <laughs> and I didn't realise what the problem was, but it was only later on. Do you remember there was a meteorite shower? Do you remember the meteorite that struck in oh, Russia and there was a. Oh, yes, yes. And wow. it yes. came, it was Five. near his home city. Yes. And I think yes. the poor man was so the worried worries, yeah. and concerned about his family. And I didn't know at the time, and I was a little critical <laughs> of him being a little downcast oh. during his match. And really, I should apologise for that because I didn't realise the circumstances at the time because he's a, a great fighter on yes, the court. Yes, he is. Well, after having played so many matches, maybe there's a reason for, you know, being tired too. Yeah. Five and a half. Yeah, again. Perez again. The wide serve. He's doing it really well. Enough power and pace to pass Sosin off in that one. And possibly come back to what you said before that you know the preparation for the shot is simply not good enough. Seven, seven, sixteen. No, still young, there's still time to work on those skills. Just delaying the inevitable. Seventeen. Nine. Seventeen. I think a lot of credit to uh, to the Russian pair. I think over the years I've seen so often that uh, when when you are, you know, so much better than your opponent, a lot of players tend to not play as well as they can if they find it difficult to pick themselves up or play the proper shots or they expect uh, to win too easily and then uh, suddenly they have to fight a little bit for it and 
lots of lots of reasons. But here, the two Russians, they're just going in, doing the business, and that's it. Yeah, I agree. Too many players too keen on showboating, and they're just quietly and calmly, and very professionally getting on with the job. That will do. Yeah, very nicely. 21 8, 21 12. And 21 minutes of play. Oh, goodness me. They were dominant. Well, quite obvious. They were the better pair today. And of course, every match within the tie desperately important. It will depend on what's happening on an adjoining court between Sweden and Scotland. There is a mathematical possibility that Russia could still top this group. And they've won this tight. And they're three love up overall, but they want a five love victory to give themselves the best possible chance of topping Group A on level two. 